Welcome to the Complete Collection series. Today, we'll be looking at Wilt Chamberlain's greatest stories, told by NBA players and legends. If you have missed any of the other episodes in this series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right corner of your screen. Thank you to everybody who recommended that I make a video on Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt has so many stories that there definitely could be a part 2 and even part 3 in this series. If you would like to be featured on the next episode, let me know which player I should do for the next episode in this series. These videos and this series takes me a long time to edit and produce, so all I ask is that you hit that like button, it would really help me out. If you are new around here and you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss an episode in this series in the future. Without further ado, here's the complete collection of Wilt Chamberlain's greatest stories. Why is it that we don't recognize Wilt Chamberlain? Looking at his videos and stuff, like, like he was so freaking athletic. Like he would have been able to play any air, air and like jump over anybody. You played against Absolutely. him. For those of us who never saw him live, what should people know about Wilt as a player? Wilt averaged 50 in one season. He did, he averaged 50 in one season. But it feels like Wilt Chamberlain, we look at it and go, you know, he was, he played in a different league. But, but it, I think we view it as, you know, now that Wilt Chamberlain guy, he scored 100 in a game, like he was an alien. If you have one player in NBA history that you could there start a team around, who would it be? I don't hate questions like that. That would be Will Chamberlain. Why? Because he's the greatest big man in the history of the game. To say who is the greatest, um, we would never know that. I mean, in, in my eye, Will Chamberlain is the greatest basketball player. Who do you think is the greatest of all time? Will Chamberlain. But we don't acknowledge, when the, when the, the topic comes up, greatest players of all time, Will Chamberlain's name never comes up. I think when you can see the similarities and you understand this is one way you can judge the two. How much impact did each change or, or evolve the game? With all the technology we have today, they didn't have the ankles, the, the MRI, all the stuff we have now, they didn't have back then. It's literally the word unbelievable is very appropriate right. for him. I would love to see him play against some of these centers today. It would, be, it, would, it would be pretty embarrassing for them to be candid with you. One of the greatest scores, rebounders ever. Somebody people have never seen something like that in that, in that era. We talk about these great performances, and we show you stats, and we show you clips, and we compare these people to Wilt Chamberlain because that's basically who set the bar so high. But for a younger generation of basketball fans and people that watch and listen to our show, they think of Will Chamberlain as the guy who scored 100 points in a game. Or they see two or three clips of him dunking. Explain to everyone just how versatile Will was. Gather around, boys and girls. Let me teach you who the Big Dipper is. Oh. Let me teach you who Will the Stilt is. Ball ears. First of all, you can't compare that. He's, he's on another level. Here's a guy during a basketball season, mm -hmm. averaged 50 points. Wilt's 50? Did you feel like that's something he could have done every year? No, that's special. That's once in a lifetime. It's, it seems incredible now to think he averaged 50 points. Yeah, 25 rebounds. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And 25 rebounds. 50 points and 25 rebounds. You sort of look back, he averaged 50.4 points a game in a season. So he got 50 every single night. It was a different. It was a different game. Yeah. It was a different game. Still, yeah. 50 points, 25 rebounds. It's 50 points and 25 rebounds. It's a credit to to what a physical specimen he was and how talented he was. Was a seven footer who literally should have his own record book. Mm -hmm. This is why a six three guard like Russell Westbrook is being compared to him for triple doubles. A six five guard like James Harden is being compared to him for the way he scores. And a seven-foot player like Jokic is being compared to him for having triple doubles because he's the unstoppable force in the history of basketball. And it's not just dunks. Look at, Look at that step back, one leg jump shot. People saw Michael Jordan dominate people with the fadeaway jumper, unstoppable shot. Will Chamberlain invented the fadeaway. 
People act like Dirk invented that. <laughs> Will was doing that then. <laughs> Finger rolls. Finger rolls, dunks. He could put up video game numbers. Who do you think is the greatest of all time? Will Chamberlain. You think Will Chamberlain is the greatest of all time? So that's, mm -hmm. that's the one of the people I am so curious about because mm -hmm. when you read about him, you know, you read about how high he jumped, you read about what he bench pressed, you read about, you know, his quickness, tr you know, track, all, it just almost, it almost like, you know the Bo <laughs> Jackson, you hear about Bo yeah. was a mid, Deion Sanders was a mid, Wilt is in that category to me of Bo, Deion, and Wilt. Mm -hmm. You played against him, right? Mm -hmm. What was he like when you played against him? Well, you know, there was the two Wilts. It was the Wilt that uh, dominated uh, early on in his career. Then when they said that he, you know, shot too much. People said that he was selfish. So you know what he did? Went back and led the league in assists. He led the league in assists one year. Actually, they played in a triangle offense. Um, a center led the league in assists? Yeah, 1967. Wow. 68. I think it was eight and a half was the, the leading number. Chamberlain, back pass for Goodwin. Good! It goes into the free throw line. Oh, great man. Now the Lakers, he's got play play off. Cutting for the layup. Chamberlain, one of the best in the game at handing off to the cutter. Will stopped shooting in his sixth year, sixth or seventh year in the league, and became an assist guy and whatnot. So, and he didn't play, he only played 13 years. And he, and he didn't, he played part of one year of that. So he played like 12 years, 12 and a half years, let's say. And he was the all-time leading scorer before everybody else started. He still has 72 records on the books. He's got 68 records by himself. So he's got, you know, he's tied with four people in another area. I mean, and this has been, what, 40-some years ago. Just numbers in itself tell 50 points a game, 20, average 20-some rebounds a game. He averaged four, almost 48 minutes a game. I mean, when you... Led the league in assists once, which, yes. is, which is unheard of as a center. Exactly. Whatever they said he couldn't do, he did. And that, and that was always what. I put my elbow into his solar plexus and I heard him grunt. Ugh. And as I was coming back on the court, he was coming after me with his left hand. And I knew that was not to shake my hand because he's right-handed. And I knocked this photographer off his stool. I picked up the stool and I reached back to hit Wilton. By that time, the whole bench on both teams had emptied and Russell was in front of Wilt. Wilt was looking over his shoulders, pointing at me and saying, Sam Jones, I'm going to make you eat the stool. And I was saying, Wilt Chamberlain, I'm going to crack your kneecaps. Well, anyway, that got over. The next night we played in Philadelphia. And so Wilt Chamberlain told me, he said, don't come into the paint tonight. And, I, you know, being a smart aleck, like I said, well, I'm going to come in there. The first time I got the ball, I went in for a layup. He did not try to block the ball at all. He blocked my body. He put me flat on my back, and I remember him coming and getting close to me and saying, the next time you come in here, I'll knock you flat on your butt again as he was picking me up. And I says, I won't be back. <laughs> and that all night, I did not come back into the paint. You talk about in your prime, how you think you would have maybe uh, stacked up against Shaquille O'Neal, or you know, well, what do you think might would would have happened? You versus Shaquille O'Neal today, because people sometimes lump the two of you together. Yeah, probably uh, more qualified than anybody for this one. Uh, you played, uh, you were contemporary, I believe, for some period of time with Will Chamberlain. You obviously coached Shaquille O'Neal. Strengths and weaknesses of each, and if you have to rank them, who's number one, who's number two on that list of two centers? Will Chamberlain was indeed the most dominant player ever. Well, you know, as, as formidable as Shaq was physically, just uh, stalwart, 300 pounds of steel and uh, agility and athleticism, uh, Will was all of that. The most, one of the most dominant forces we ever had in our game, along with Shaq. You had no more regrets. championships than Will. Yeah, I got more champions, but, you know, they, like, I'm very... When it comes to basketball conversations, I'm very arrogant. I only want to hear my name. So when they say who's the most dominant player ever, I want them to say my name. I don't want them to be like, uh, maybe Will, maybe Shaq. That, that's, that don't fly with me. I want them to say Shaq. Does, so, does that really bother you? Yeah, it does. Because that was my niche. I wasn't going for the greatest player niche. I wasn't going for you know, the, the best. I wasn't going for that because those, those words are 
You know, those words are just thrown out. You know, words like most dominant, you got to earn that. So, Will averaged 50 in one season. He did. He averaged 50 in one season. So, I'm mad because I wanted to pass him up in points. Now, if I had to pass him up, I would have arrogantly said, Shaquille O'Neal is the most dominant player ever. Don't ever ask me the question again. Yeah, I got more rings than him, but he got more 50-point games, he got more rebounds, and he has more points. Shaquille didn't have quite the same athleticism that Wilt had. He had the bounce, and he had the, uh, the speed, but he didn't have the endurance that obviously by the 48 minutes a night that we talked about. Um, he had a jump hook, whereas you know, Wilt didn't have a jump hook. He had an array of shots. He had a hook. He had a finger roll. He had a turnaround jump shot. And uh, uh, Shaq was a post-sprinter. Shaq gets away with what I would consider murder. So they, uh, they, uh, they let one, him go. Yeah, I mean, I would think that when you dip your shoulder and you run over top of a guy and the foul is called on the guy laying on the floor, you know, you're getting away with something. So, so uh, Shaq is allowed maybe to score some points that maybe he wouldn't get. But he got that zone defense in his favor, though, right? They ain't gonna be able to, they ain't gonna be able to drop three or four or five guys on him. Like you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Where he'd go down and get in the lane ahead of the crowd and. and Will was never, you know, much of a post sprinter. He used to take his time. In fact, when he rebounded, a lot of times he'd make the guards come back to him to get the ball, so he'd be down there when the ball got to the other end of the court. <laughs> I think that uh, free throw shooting, <laughs> big weakness on both spots. It, it really was. Because we're both terrible foul shooters. But uh, other than that, uh, he uh, plays an entirely different type of basketball game. Mm -hmm. that he uses his physicality, mm -hmm. and he's a big, strong young man, and uh, that works well in today's game. Mm -hmm. If he was facing me and other guys of my time, not so, not so good. I mean, I'm a guy bench pressing around 600 pounds when I was at, at my 600 best. 600 pounds? Yeah, right. One night, we were in a playoffs against Philadelphia when he was still with Philadelphia. And they fouled out both Walt Bellamy and Willis Reed, and I ended up having to be the third center to go in and play Wilt a double overtime game. So it was one of those things. But the thing with Wilt is he would he took me up with him when he went up to shoot a shot. He was that strong. <laughs> <laughs> he was very strong. Thank you for your question. First of all, you're you're never gonna say who's the greatest of all time. To me, I think that's that's more for PR and more for selling mm -hmm. stories and, and getting hype. Uh, Jack and, and Tiger never played against each other. They never played in the same tournament. They never played with the same equipment. They never played with the same you know, length of golf course. I never played against Will Chamberlain. To say who is the greatest, um, we will never know that. I mean, in, in my eye, Will Chamberlain is the greatest basketball player. To now say that you know one's greater than the other is being a little bit you know, unfair. Everybody always points to Michael and making all these changes or things, but Will Chamberlain was the first one that really made changes. He was the first dominant person of basketball. How much impact did each change or, or evolve the game? Let's talk about uh, well, Michael Jordan. I'm Michael. curious. Uh, Michael Jordan Say we had a time machine here. Uh, what if we could send Michael Jordan uh, back to playing uh, basketball with you in your prime? When you see Michael Jordan, I'm a product of modern basketball, modern technology. With all the technology we have today, they didn't have the ankles, the, the MRI, all the stuff we have now, they didn't have back then. But all the great achievements comes from Oscar Robinson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Will Chamberlain. To all the basketball players way before Michael Jordan. I just got the fruit of the labor, I guess. I, I learned so much from these guys watching them, and I've kind of gained more of the publicity and more of the notoriety because of me learning from what they have done years way before me. Uh, a few months ago, they said, Michael, now don't be, you know, shy, and don't be this and don't be that. Are you the best basketball player that ever played? And Michael said, yes, I am. We're at the NBA's all-time team celebration, Cleveland, 1997. When they announced the top 50 players, mm -hmm. right, which you were on that list, right, mm -hmm. when they announced them, I heard when they were bringing everybody up, at the end of the row, is Wilt and Michael Jordan. 
and they're sitting at a table arguing vociferously as to who the greatest player of all time was. And they're really? back and forth. And just, it just intense as can be. Jordan and Wilt were debating on who's the greatest. <laughs> and Stern had to say, come on up here. You, they, we're going really at it. And one saying, I am. The other one saying, I am. They're going, but you couldn't do this. And my year I did this. And I was doing this. And I changed again with this. It bothers you when people talk about him as being the greatest player of all time. Well, it bothers me because we all have our opinions. I contend Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player who ever lived. Mm -hmm. I would put you number two only because you only won two championships. Now people are going to say, well, you know what, he had a lot of stats and this and that. You won two world championships, okay? I have a friend of mine who I talk to about once a week. You know what he says about Michael's four championships? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything about it. Because, Why? Because, because he has 11. You know, Russell, I don't think, uh, you know, you can predicate how great a guy really is or because he has championships. There's a lot of guys on those championship teams who've done nothing. I won six championships. Bill Russell won 11. Does that make Bill Russell better than me and make me better than him? No, because we play at different eras. So when you try to equate who's the greatest of all time, it's an unfair parallel. It's an unfair choice. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jordan is one of those rare specimens that could have played at any particular time and is a gifted, uh, gifted athlete who uh, is using those gifts uh, in basketball incredibly so. I think that almost every man in the NBA should give him 10% of their checks. Now, what, what would his playing style, how would that have translated back then? Well, his playing style is he's six foot seven and he's uh, like 197 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, coming into what we call our domain, the pivot mm -hmm. for us big guys, mm -hmm. wouldn't that have been very wise of Michael? To me, there's no real debate, you know, as far as I was concerned. I mean, we've had great players as far as, you know, with, with Michael and, of course, LeBron. You know, everybody, Michael set a tone for the guys from, the 80s up. Now, I know that basketball is a team game. Right. And you've already made Michael number one. Mm -hmm. But if you had to have Will against Michael, my prime and his prime, how much money would you be willing to <laughs> Wow. Close or not even close? Oh, everybody's close. But, you know, Will just did things. I mean, you talk in terms of, of, of you said don't, you know, from the free throw line, free throws. I actually saw this, and I think to this day people don't believe it, but he, he, he wasn't at the top of the circle, but he was about three steps behind it on a free throw, and he ran to the free throw line, took off and dunked the ball. And in the rules at that time, you could. I think I could have been very definitely instrumental because I was chairman of the Basketball Coaches Rules Recommendation Committee, and I explained to the coaches at the convention what I saw, and said that, you know, something's going to have to be done so that we, you know, don't have guys that can dunk the ball in the free throw line. And they changed that rule. The rule begins, you have to stay behind the free throw line until the ball hits the back. They had a little 13-foot lanes. That got expanded. I mean, he did things that uh, until today is, is still a part of the game, what's made the game what it is today. Revolutionary type of guy. I'll tell you a great magic story. Um, I'm a coach at UCLA, and he used to come to the men's gym mm -hmm. and organize games. Yeah, I remember and There were a lot of pickup games I remember that. all the time, yeah. and he used to make the sides and stack them. So one, one night um, I'm watching, and uh, Kevin O'Connor are in the stands. Will Chamberlain's playing with four of my freshmen against Magic, Bernard King, James Worthy, Byron Scott, and uh, Green. AC Green. AC Green. Green. Uh -huh. And it's game point. Magic throws a sky hook. Wilt blocks it. Magic calls game. And Wilt says, that wasn't goaltending. That was a clean block. And Magic took the ball. He said, game over next. And Wilt <laughs> said, hey, coach, was that goaltending? And I, I said, no, that was a clean block. Magic says, what do you think he's going to say? They're his kids. <laughs> and Wilt says, all right. Look, we're going to play a game till 12. We'll do it again. Winner stays, and there'll be no more shots made at this basket. He blocked every everything. shot. 43 <laughs> years old. He was blocking everything. It was, it was unbelievable. So, somebody used to play in those 80s games who I asked who's the best player you ever played with or against told me it was about a 50-year-old Wilt Chamberlain at those UCLA pickup games. He was, he was that kind of physical presence. My friend Wilt Norman Chamberlain 
was far and away the best player I've ever played against. We cannot throw out what Wilt. Mm. Wilt is Wilt. I mean, obviously he didn't win championships, but I, I'm with Shaq. You, you go with winners because Bill Russell won so much, but when you start saying which would you start a team with, it's hard to go against the Big Dipper. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to go against him. As far as basketball skills are concerned, there's never been anybody to accomplish what Will Chamberlain has accomplished, and he was a, an incredible human being, an incredible physical specimen, and a great athlete. And I don't think anybody will come along who will be able to match the records that Wilt has accomplished. Uh, he just never had the personnel like Bill Russell had to, to go along with him. If Wilt had the good fortune of having as many great teammates as Bill Russell had, I think that his record of championships would have been phenomenal. Keep in mind that uh, in his NBA career, uh, Bill Russell has zero individual all-time records. Michael Jordan has three all-time NBA records. Will Chamberlain has 56 all-time NBA records. Now tell me who's the greatest player of all time. With all deference to Bill Russell in the winning, Right. The man right. average, I don't care what era, right. he averaged 50 and 25 for Correct. Him. He's got to be on Mount Rushmore. He didn't win enough, but he was going against the Celtics every single year. And you can't even argue Whoa. by the numbers. Wilt Chamberlain, yes. the most dominant player yes. ever in this game. Yep. But we do not acknowledge Wilt Chamberlain. We have forgot about him. And he's one of the most athletic players who's ever played the game. He led the league in assists. He led the league in field goal percentage, led the league in block shots. He led the, he, whatever you wanted him to do, he was going to do. People seem to think that your friendship with him helped you a little bit competitively because he liked you so much. That's a crock. Do you know what the NBA rebound record is? It's 55 rebounds by Will Chamberlain. You know who the other center was that night? It was Bill Russell. Now, how's that take it easy? Yeah, he did that in November of 1960. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, his second year in the league, 55 rebounds. That to me is <laughs> oh, incredible man. because, you know, against Bill Russell, they were the two exactly. greatest rebounders in the history of the game. He called me up one day, Sports Illustrated had a cover and said, Is Dennis Rodman the best rebounder ever? Oh, God. And Wilt was so annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and I cleaned it up saying annoyed. <laughs> so he calls me up and he asked me, Did I believe this bleep? And so I said, I don't pay attention to that. He says, I had more rebounds a quarter than he had a whole game. In the 60s, Wilt was just picked apart more than any athlete. Why doesn't he do this? Why does he only care about numbers? Did you think it was fair? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I never did any of that foolish. You never said one thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, put, he got the 100 points against my team, the Knicks. Uh, that was in Hershey, Pennsylvania, but I read about it immediately the next day. 50 years ago, when he scored 100 points. That's right, 100 points. 100 points in right. one game, which I believe was versus the Knicks, 1962. That's right. Yeah. Is that That's right? It's a long, long time ago. A... Right, yeah, right, right, right. Was right. there a point? 100 points in one game. The game wasn't on TV. Just some pictures remain. But you better believe that night lives on in the memories of those who saw it. He scored 100 points in a game mm -hmm. in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And mm -hmm. Al, you were in that game. And the night that he got 100, were you cognizant of that? Did you, did you talk about it at halftime, or did you no. treat it like a no-hitter? When Dave Zinkoff, who you remember, was doing yeah. the game, he started calling every point after that. And he would say, and that's 82, and that's 83. <laughs> oh, well, Zinkoff. then we became cognizant <laughs> that he had guy. a chance. <laughs> I believe that a great basketball player on a good night for him or a hot night for him can score 100 points. I believe that, sincerely. I believe the other records I have that they may have a hard time ever taking a look at. They always said he was by far the strongest person oh, who's they, ever they, played they, the oh, NBA. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. he, I remember that he lifted me up like with one arm like nothing. Probably the greatest play I have ever seen in my life uh, Will Chamberlain was involved with, with Gus Johnson. Wilt was standing there. Gus goes up to dunk it. Will catches the ball, throws Gus to the floor, still holding the ball. They carry Gus off the court with a dislocated shoulder from bouncing off the floor. 
I don't see how anyone in the NBA will ever be as strong as he was. One time in a game, Casey Jones tied him up. He was really upset. And so Wilt Chamberlain picked up the ball with Casey still attached. And he picked it up with his arms extended, brought it to his chest, and threw a two-handed chest pass with Casey still on the ball. That's how strong he was. <laughs> he came to the gym, and he would do a tricep extension that, like, the big guys, the strongest guys, would do, let's say, 120 pounds, let's say, tricep extension, putting down, right? He would come, and he would do 150, 170 pounds with Chamberlain. That's how strong he was. When he made the moves with Arnold Schwarzenegger, they were in a weight room. And Will says, well, how do you do that? And Arnold goes, well, this way you do it. And he goes, oh, you push up. So he goes, Will lays down on the bench, gets up under it, bing, 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 bing. That's Schwarzenegger never came into the weight room with Will again. You know, when you're 32 years old, you know, you, you haven't quite checked your ego at the door yet. And I wasn't quite ready to, 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 you know, to check my ego at the door. So Dick McGuire, who was, you know, was a teammate of mine, and uh, he said, Earl, the job is yours. So he offered me the job. I said, well, Dick, let me think about it. We played an exhibition game <clears throat> against the Philadelphia Warriors in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I saw Will for the first time. I said, it's time to go. <laughs> hey, 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 I said, it's time. I, I, I told him, I said, you know what, man, you did me a great favor. He said, what did I do? I said, you know, you, you took a, 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 a hand-wringing and gut-wrenching decision and made it a no-brainer. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> when the game ended, I was Dick's assistant coach. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember there was a game against uh, Brooklyn. I played with Brooklyn, and Wilt played with the team from Philly. And we had this game against them, and it was one of, probably one of the best games you've ever seen. But everybody don't remember it because it wasn't on video. It was pre-video. So, I mean, it was a great game. And I think that Wilt, and we had a guy by the name of Jackie Jackson, who was like six foot four and, he could, and actually touched the top of the backboard. I've heard people talk about guys touching the backboard. This guy can do it. And we ran a play, and Wilt used to shoot this fadeaway jump shot. He used to go up high and shoot it off the glass. So we had a play that we would make Wilt shoot this jump shot, and Jackie would come over and block it. And we had the play set up perfect. Wilt went in and turned, shot a jump shot. Jackie came from the weak side and quartered it right at the top of the, of the backboard. And the crowd went crazy. People were running around the place and jumping off the fence and almost jumping off the ceilings and stuff. And it, it was just phenomenal. And we looked over at Wilt and Wilt was staring at us and he will call timeout. Just called timeout like that. And everybody was still running around screaming. And back then there wasn't high five. They were giving everybody low five and stuff. Everybody was clapping and carrying on. And then the next 15 plays were dunks by Wilt that I've never seen before in my life. He dunked every single way you can even imagine for And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, help me out by hitting that like button, subscribing if you are new for more NBA content just like this, and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode in the series. Thank you for watching. Peace.